Thanks for clicking on the video. Today I'm back in the woods with my friend Lee and today we're looking for chanterelles. So you can see Lee's balanced over this creek. It's because he's just spotted some chanterelles. So what are we looking for here, Lee? Looking for chanterelles, one of my favorite mushrooms. And, and a mushroom that has a really, really long season usually, or can do, depending on the right conditions. Um, and it's also one of the easiest to identify. And you can see there, there's a few more, but what are we doing with those, Lee? We're leaving them. We're leaving them for next week. Why is it you think that we're finding them in this depression or in this gully compared to on the woodland floor? So they can grow on the woodland floor, um, but this is probably one of their most typical kind of habitats is, is alongside um, ditches and banks. They don't always have to be full of water or hold water, but just that depression enough is enough usually to, to mean that, that that area holds a lot more water. Um, so they do prefer moister ground. They, they love moss. And that's exactly what we've got here. We've got that low-lying ground which is where a lot of the water is collecting it's actually running down and lots of moss combined with the species of tree it well as, as far as i know that creates the perfect environment mm -hmm. for chanterelles and various other mushrooms yeah those are the perfect conditions we're looking for so some of you might remember lee from a previous video a video that i put up 12 months ago in fact i'll just put the link up right here Lee knows all about mushrooms and today, as I mentioned, we're going to be concentrating on looking for chanterelles. And we've just come now to an area, a small patch, where Lee in the past has found winter chanterelles. But we've been here two or three minutes, we're not too sure if we're going to find anything because we haven't found anything yet. But we'll see what happens. The thing about foraging is, you never really know. It's always great to go out and hopefully you end up going home with something, but you never know what you're going to find, if you're going to find anything at all. So we've now been here five minutes and we're not finding anything. No, not here. Is Just there a reason why you think that we're not finding any of the winter chanterelles right here? I think this season is a, is a strange one this year. Um, it would normally be about the start of finding the winter chanterelles and it would be like right at the end of finding the golden. But I think this year has kind of gone on a bit a bit longer. So I think it, this year it's just a little bit early still. I've seen, I've seen them in other patches, but there's nothing here yet. With that being said, let's crack on and see if we can find sure. some more. So we've just walked along, we found this ditch and once again, looking along in the edge, or you could say the riverbank, of the ditch there we are classic chanterelles so lee would you say that you find chanterelles in the similar or in, in the in a similar location year after year so yeah for example did you know they were they were here at, in this location have you picked them here before and could you I mean, rely on coming well, back here next year to pick them there is there is a rule that we're chanterelles they form a symbiosis with certain trees. Some symbiotic relationship. Yeah, so uh, it's an exchange of nutrients etc um, but if you can find the tree that they're growing with it's quite often that they will be growing with that every year. So what tree species, so it looks like we've got a beech tree here, in fact there's lots of beech trees right here in this woodland so would you say that this beech tree is hosting these mushrooms? Yeah certainly, I mean uh, chanterelles is a classic uh, mushroom that, that forms a sy uh, symbiotic relationship with certain trees um, uh, so you're not guaranteed to find them in the, in the same spot next year but there's always a good chance that you will um, and the ho you're, you're, you're quite often you're always going to find beech trees in the woods but you're not always going to find chanterelles unless you have the host tree beech is a classic oak I find them with and birch those are the three main ones for me um, that, that, that seem to hold chanterelles okay brilliant Last year, with my video that we did together, which was identifying wild forageable mushrooms in the UK, that is, there were quite a few people commenting, why are we ripping, why are we pulling the mushroom up by its roots and not cutting them or trimming them? Got anything to say to that, Lee? Yeah, I mean, like we were discussing earlier, I think it's, from, a, from a, an identification purpose, it's very important that you pull the mushroom so you can see all the way, all the whole stem, etc. But it's also, um, 
you know, we, you know we, we've had a few comments where people are worried that we're, we're, it's quite an invasive way of picking and destructive um, and that we're actually destroying the mycelium or harming the mycelium in, in some way, which is just, you know, in my humble opinion, a complete myth. Um, you know, there's far more problems with uh, farming practices and the adding of fertilizers and chemicals and so on um, onto forest areas and spraying as well. Right, and so that's much that's more. Mu that's the, really that's the, that's that's what's going to affect the mycelium. Right, okay, okay. You're never going to be able to harm the mycelium network. is vast. Um, and the mycelium that's that's just almost it looks like a, a cobweb network which is below yep. a few inches possibly below yep. the surface the leaves yep. on the surface and that is that is what the a lot of mushrooms thrive in or grow from exactly so um with chanterelles as they form a symbiosis with the trees those are usually located in and around the roots of a tree uh, other mushrooms that are saprophotic will be feeding on leaf litter or grass litter so in a field um, and those these can spread out in quite a large, vast area and form large rings, which is where you get the fairy rings. So we've just come across a, another species of mushroom. They're bright purple in colour. Beautiful looking, actually. It almost yeah. like something that should be in a tropical aquarium, in fact, a saltwater aquarium. You can take one home as a pet if you want. <laughs> <They're> <laughs> Not sure it's going to swim that well. <laughs> but uh, yeah, these are one of my, one of my favourite mushrooms. Not necessarily for the flavour, but just the the, the the look really. These are these are more of a, a they're a far prettier mushroom than taste, um, that's for sure. But um, they often also I, I seem to find these a lot when I find chanterelles, because the chanterelles often uh, are, are you know are growing with and around beach, uh, and these babies like it too. And they're tasty, are they? They're not the tastiest of mushrooms, but they're edible, um, and, but they look really good. So it, they're not a bad taste at all, but for, for flavour, you wouldn't rate them up there. But they look really cool next to chanterelles. Wow. Lovely, lovely bit of colour there. There's a few smaller ones here then. Yeah, so size of uh, chanterelle is kind of really down to yourself. Um, most restaurants and things like and prefer chanterelles to be about that sort of size. I love them. They kind of refer to as a girol at that sort of size. Um, if left after about a week to two weeks, they can grow usually almost double that depending on the conditions so that uh, you know as long as it's wet enough and warm enough still okay. and then you can see there there's some really small ones what do you what do you, what did you just call those pins these are these are pins chanterelle pins so they're the early stages they must be what, yeah. a couple of days old if yeah they're, they're, they've they've emerged over the last few days um her chanterelles is a relatively slow growing mushroom and and and, and after about two i'll probably come back in about two two weeks three weeks and that will be a pickable size so in two weeks, what do you say? It could be about this sort of size? Yeah, yeah, it should yeah. easily be that big, if yeah. not bigger, yeah. So Lee, we've just mentioned the winter chanterelle and the golden chanterelle, but are there any other species of chanterelle that we commonly find here in the UK? Yes, so they're, they're really, well in the UK it's quite a large area because um, there are a few species in, in, uh, in Ireland and Scotland that we don't really get in England. Um, but it, but the, the kind of the main English species that we're really worrying about is, um, the, is the golden chanterelle, which are the ones we found today. There's a black trumpet chanterelle, which is one of my favourite mushrooms on earth. Um, and there's also uh, the winter chanterelle, which again, we're looking for today. We hopefully find some of those. Um, and then the last one is, it's quite a rare one that we tend to find um, in only a few parts of, the, of, of England. Uh, and that's the ashen chanterelle. And that's quite a rare species. I only ever see it once or twice a year. So it's not something we really pick. And look at the colours, those purples and yellows, that really is beautiful. Achoo. 
So we've just walked about 10 minutes and we've now moved to an area in the woodland where there's birch trees, which are these white trees. Here you can see, you can see the, the white bark on them, as well as pine trees. And Lee has just found another species of mushroom. This one is a Scarlatina belete, quite closely related to the sep. Um, but care is needed with this one because it can cause gastric upset or does cause gastric upset uh, if eaten raw and can cause gastric upset in some people. So uh, like with all mushrooms really, even seps, uh, it's always worth just trying a little bit first and then... A little bit at a time to see yeah. if or not yeah. they agree with your body. Yeah, it's always worth just being a little bit cautious first time. But I'm just going to cut this mushroom just to show you one of its identifying... Oh, I know this one. Look at that. And then that changes colour. From yellow to blue. It's as soon it's quite as it's vivid. Cut, you can see Beautiful. that colour change straight away. Wow. It's amazing. But this has to be cooked. If you're going to eat, it has to be fully cooked. Um, uh, and like I said, care is needed because one of my friends is now allergic to seps. Really? Because, yeah, actually two of my friends have, uh, are. are um, oh, look at that. We've just given allergic. it, what, 20, 30 seconds? And look at the colour yeah. now. Amazing. Incredible. So your friend is now allergic to seps, and is there a reason yeah, for that? Yeah, well, because of this. Because they both ate under undercooked. Well, they think they both ate undercooked scarlet scarletina belites. Wow! And and now have an intolerance to seps, which is a bit of a shame. Wow! There's another type of um, belitus called a bay belite, uh, but we'll cover seps and belites in another video. But uh, it's another fairly good edible. As Lee just mentioned, we are going to be doing another video very soon. In fact, probably within the next week or two, and it'll be mainly seps, foraging for seps here in the UK. And now what we've come across are winter chanterelles. And before we pick them, you might be able to see them. In fact, you can just see how camouflaged they are when you're looking down, at especially this damp, wet day, looking at the wet leaves on the forest floor. But as you can probably see already, yes, they're in the middle of the screen and Lee is about to pick them. So there's one, two, there's like three there. Beautiful little things, aren't they? Lee, would you say that they've been eaten already by squirrels or? No, think... they're, just, they, they're just a funny one. They may, have been, they may have been eaten there by slugs. Oh yeah, oh and there as well. Yeah. So do we want these ones? Yes, please. Um, but they are, they're a funny one, they do come up in quite odd shapes, so they do come up in quite weird shapes. You can see Lee's brought his dogs along today, two little Jack Russells. Ashish, ashish. And I've got my dog, Amber, right there. Okay. So would these have the same sort of lifespan when it comes to, would you leave the smaller ones for these winter chanterelles and then come back later on for them to be bigger? Yeah, like, so definitely. So we were discussing earlier how um, uh, golden chanterelles take a lot longer uh, than, than some other mushrooms kind of to go from button or pin to to pickable uh, these are another example these will can grow quite slowly um, and they'll just slowly keep getting bigger you know we'd, we're, we're right at the beginning of the season for these so they should last till January February March so Lee I've got another question and I think you might get asked this question quite often should you wash a mushroom no why not I don't think so uh, they're quite, especially seps, they're quite um, absorbent. Um, if you pick them after the rain, they're all going to be, already going to be quite wet anyway. Um, but washing a mushroom just makes them, in my opinion, soggy. Okay. The only, uh, uh, the only exception to that rule might be something like um, Horn of Plenty, so the black trumpet chanterelle. Okay. Because those can harvest a lot of crap. Of, so, of what, bacteria? No, it's more just that because they're of their funnel shape. Oh, so the clothes. dirt build up exactly. can build up within that funnel. Yeah, so the, the way that right. you prepare those is just nip a very tiny bit off the offer, off the bottom, yeah. and then you just kind of very quickly put them into water. And does that flush through? Yeah. Ah, yeah. oh, I get it, I get it. I, find it I, I do find it quite peculiar watching people washing mushrooms. It's quite a strange thing for me. But I suppose that the only exception is truffles, um, they're usually quite dirty, uh, black trumpets, uh, and maybe morels. So although we're looking for chanterelles, we are also looking for other edible species. And this area in particular, this looks very similar to uh -huh. where we found saffron milk caps last year. There you go, Justin. Very similar. Oh, there we go. Oh, they look a bit, <laughs> they look a bit gone. That's yours. A bit over. 
So it looks like the saffron milk cap. We can't, I don't think we can do the saffron milk cap test by pressing the, the gills underneath to see if there's any of that saffron but colour. But you can taste it. But so you have a big bite of it. And if it tastes, no. Well, you can definitely see that one is a very old saffron milk cap. So I'm going to just put that straight back and hopefully the insects will eat it and the wildlife and we're just giving it back to nature. We're not taking that home and we're not preserving it. We're not keeping it. Oh, is this a rusula? Yeah, but it, and those are so... Uh, that one's a hot one, the spicy one again. Oh, is that the one that's a bit like horseradish? Yeah, it's really pokey. So these ones are brown birch belit. But unfortunately, as with quite a lot of specimens of this mushroom, they go over and are over here. But these, this mushroom tends to go over very quickly. Over you mean it's beyond, it, it, it's past it, its best. Best, yeah, exactly. Um, you know, uh, you, you're really, you're looking for a nice tight specimen of this, but um, they go over very quickly. So if you were to pick those for the bag, you want to eat them the same day. Um, but I prefer, much prefer to dry these and eat them. Speaking of drying mushrooms, how do you preserve mushrooms? What's, what, what is the best way for you? Do you, do you? do you put them in a dehydrator? Do you put them in the oven to dry out? Yeah, so dehydrator by, by, by far is the most efficient way of, of preserving mushrooms. Are there any mushrooms that you, you wouldn't, any mushrooms that you pick in the UK, edible mushrooms that you wouldn't preserve or that don't preserve that well? Yeah, so, I mean, each mushroom really is different. Um, seps, I find the flavor of a sep is much, much better once it's been dried but the texture is completely different to how it was when it was fresh. Um, so there's two different uses for it. Um, saffron milk cap that we talked about earlier, that's one of my favorite ones to pickle because it's got a real crisp, okay. beautiful crunch to okay. it. They're really, really good. Um, I can imagine a lot, of, a lot of mushrooms going a bit sluggish, slimy sort of sluggish texture. They can. It's when, not, pi when pickled. Yeah. It's not something, that's why saffron is quite good probably for an English palate because it doesn't go quite as, as, as gooey. Um, something like this, if you tried to pickle that, it would be like eating a slug in a few months. Right, okay. And it's not really something uh, that, that that's, um, the English palate is used to. So we've now moved down. We aren't too far from a road. You might be able to hear a road in the background but this really is a stunning woodland. There's all sorts of woodland paths here. And we've just come across, again, another winter chanterelle growing in amongst all this grass. That's a nice. That's a beauty. Nice one right there. That's what I preferred to have. These winter chanterelles are so camouflaged. If you look at that, it really blends in with the rest of the ground, with all those, those dark leaves. So I think you really need a, tra a good trained eye to find these. So just to show you how camouflaged these winter chanterelles are, you might or you might not be able to see the winter chanterelle in this shot. There it is, right there. Oh, and there's a few more right here. Look at that, oh, and there. Oh, quite a bit of a family of them down there. They're so hard to identify from the top, but as soon as you look from, from the side, you can see those yellow stems. So just next to these winter chanterelles, I found one of my other fa one of my other favourite mushrooms, which is a hedgehog. Um, it's quite easy to identify this one, um, as you can see. This one has spines underneath it, as opposed to gills. Or, or paws like a bleep and they kind of come off like that that's where it gets its name these can grow in huge rings and actually so there's more there more under the more. dog and, and as we're walking along here there's a, a huge ring almost a massive ring of these mushrooms some more here and here and you can see sometimes they get really really big there you go oh wow all the way out and it's well, just under ring, the dog just along here and there so it's a few, one whole ring, massive. Wow. Yeah, I'm gonna take these home. I'm gonna eat these. I don't, I don't tend to find them very nice to dry uh, and they can be quite soggy to pickle. Um, so it's not really for my taste. 
I much prefer these fried off dry. I dry fry these. Dry them, okay. And then I uh, no dry fry them, uh, and then I put a little bit of butter in at the end because if you right. put oil in it before, to fry them with oil or butter, they can be really wet. Right, right. Some of you might remember from my last video that I'm not really a fan when it comes to eating mushrooms. I think it's something in the texture. That sluggish texture, well that's what I remember from my childhood memories and I think that's kind of put me off for life. And you know what, I've, I've, de I've described that, I've mentioned it to a lot of people in the past and there are quite a few people that can relate to it. So if you're watching this out of curiosity, out of interest, then let me know if you as well are not keen on the texture of a cooked mushroom. Ooh, a nice little batch of golden chanterelles. So Lee, you got one more question for you. What's your favorite way when it comes to cooking chanterelles? So, very quick, um, I, I tend to make sure you've um, cleaned them well we're not washing them, we're just prepping them like that, cut any dirt off, into a really hot pan, or medium hot pan, um, and, and, I, and completely dry. So I toast them, I kind of on a, almost want to colour them in the pan without any butter or oil. And what that does is it kind of slightly reduces the, uh, the water in there. When you think they're kind of nearly done, I take them off the heat, then I add a knob of butter. And if you wanted to make a cream sauce from there, you add cream, right. uh, reduce it back down. But I like just simply with butter. Well, there's a good tip for you guys if you're at home or if you're out picking this season. That's Lee's way of cooking chanterelles. So as I said earlier, this video is mainly about chanterelles. I have got another video when it comes to identifying other edible mushrooms. And I'll put a link at the end of this video in the description. As you can see, we've got a nice different selection of mushrooms. Do you want to briefly talk through what we have again? So we've got the brown birch belete there, which probably gonna I'm gonna put that into dry. We have a beautiful bay belete again for the dryer. Um, some wonderful hedgehog mushrooms, the golden shants or the golden shants uh, and the winter shants, and then my favourite colour colour combination, beautiful. the amethyst there with the um, with it as well. Well, that's about it for the, this video. I just want to say thank you very much for watching and a huge thanks to Lee. You're going to see him again soon. We're going to do some more videos. I think the next video we'll do will be a video similar to this. We're looking for seps. Fingers crossed. And on that note, don't forget to give it a like and also check out Lee's Instagram. I'll put the link below and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.